right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the jam track there at the beginning. Just kind of a little just bit of improv over a backing track that I found. I'll throw the backing track link information in the uh, description. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. This is going to be a video showing the lion and the ox stomp together as a pair and how I believe that they are the perfect combo for a very good rock sound on stage. Um, as you can see, I do have an MXR 10 band EQ. Go ahead, turn that off. And it's not doing much. It's just kind of massaging the top end just a little bit and that's it. And I've also got, I'll show I'll go ahead and kind of run through the signal path. It's got the Tokai, good old Tokai with the uh, Sheptone Brian K PAFs. Going into the Jackson Audio Golden Boy, which has quickly become probably my favorite overdrive pedal ever. Uh, it can do kind of everything. Um, and that's going into a Dunlop 535Q after that, into an Ernie Ball MVP volume pedal, into the Lion, into the MXR uh, 10 band EQ, into the TC Spark, into the Ox Stomp, then to my Focusrite 18i8. So that's the signal path, and this is what just the Lion and the Ox Stomp sound like by themselves. <laughs> And it cleans up really nicely. And I'm kind of having to reach around the GoPro mount that's currently pointing at the pedal board. So if you see me kind of like contorting all weird trying to hit these buttons, that's why. Now let me show you what the Lion boost does. I don't take the boost in the Lion further than nine o'clock. I think it starts to sound a little bit, a little bit muddy with the amount of gain that I have dialed in on the pedal itself. Pile on more boost on top of that, it kind of starts to get a little flubby. So this is without it on. With it on. Let me show you what it sounds like if I take it higher than that. Uh, okay, so it's right about there. starting to kind of lose it, starting to lose its composure there. So let's bring it on back down. Okay, turn that off. And now I'll do the MXR 10 band EQ. And yeah, it's almost completely flat with just a little bit of 4K, a little bit of 8K and a little, just a touch of 500k. And that's it, that's really all there is. So this is without it.
So yeah, just a little bit of extra sparkle there. Uh, nothing crazy. Let me go ahead and show you on the Ox Stomp app what I have going on here. So using the Marshall Vintage 30 cabinet and it's got the condenser 67 and I'm not doing any sort of mic panning because I run basically two mono signals one to the monitor the ZLX monitor this uh, behind me on stage and then another to the PA so the condenser 67 is off axis mic EQ again very very minimal EQ just a touch of mid-range and I think that's kind of it um, I really wish I really hope that uh, Universal start to mature the app and give us some improvements on this app. And it's something I mentioned on the Universal forums that I would like to see an actual decibel reading when we're doing these slideys, uh, these sliders where we can know how much we're boosting or cutting the sound. Um, instead, you just got to just use your ears and leave it where you like it, I guess. Um, anyways, mic two, um, you know, the Royer 121, no EQing on that. Room mics, um, condenser stereo, and the room mics are cranked. Now, unlike the Lion itself, when you heard my demo for that, the, the reverb on the room sound on that is an actual reverb, whereas this is sort of just like a, like, I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. It's almost like just like a, a, a presence of a room. Um, so let me go ahead. I'm going to turn the reverb itself, and, you know, here's the... Here's the master EQ again, nothing crazy, just a touch of high end um, reverb, nothing fancy there. It's just kind of like a big room slash small hall, whatever you want to categorize it as. So reverb is off and I'm going to show you what the room is doing to the sound. <laughs> So nothing crazy, nothing nearly like what the room sound on the Lion reverb it, uh, had. Um, it's just a little bit of extra d depth to the sound. I really don't know how to describe it. Um, but if I turn it off, you'll hear it bone dry. So yeah, just um, don't be afraid of that room. It sounds really good. Uh, it sounds really good in my opinion. Um, reverb back on. And then my delay settings. Again. Very basic delay, nothing crazy. Yep, that's delay. Okay, on back to the pedal board. I'm gonna go to the Golden Boy now, and you're gonna hear uh, I have it on the green setting, which I think is basically a tube screamer. So I've got this going and this is not a big, powerful gain boost. This is more of just, it adds a little saturation, pushes a little bit in the mid range, pulls the low end back a little bit, maybe a little bit extra high end, um, brightness, but, oh, come back. Okay. Almost lost the camera. Okay. Uh, so yeah, just a little bit of a push, but more of a saturation boost than anything. So this is without it. And with it. Okay. And for the main boost, now this is... This is for when we want to play like Metallica or Tool or 
Rage Against the Machine or something really high gain like that. This is where the Golden Boy really comes in handy, and there are a thousand overdrive pedals out there that you can use to achieve this, but it, I feel like this one, having two very, very good, very different sounding gains that I can add or um, layer together on top of the Lion, gives me a lot of flexibility. So this is, again, this is with nothing on, no boost on, and this is the blue type drive. I don't know what it actually is. Um, so this is the blue drive. Big gain, but let's hear it with the uh, the green boost on top of it. Ah, come on, there you go. You can cover a lot of ground with that pedal. It really can add a ton of gain, but still, like... It's, it's super clean, super clean, super tight. Um, okay, let me back the volume two back a little bit here. And yeah. Just a little bit more cleanliness. So, for some of the songs that we play, that's a great sound. But for, for most of our stuff that we play, we are a 90s rock band, and we do all of the great 90s, early to mid 90s, grunge, rock, stuff like that. But we also got some 2000s, a little bit more again. We got some 80s that, you know, as a cover band, you really can't escape uh, as much as you want to. Um, you know, summer of 69 and crap like that. So crowd pleasers, all, all the crowd pleasers. But anyways, sometimes you don't need quite as much gain as, you know, you don't need. You know, you don't need that much gain for Brian Adams. So being able to pull back a little bit with the volume pedal, um, it, it's really good and it covers a ton of ground. And I'm super impressed with just how much ground it can cover for essentially three pieces of equipment. A boost pedal, the Lion, and the Ox Stomp. Now, after registering the Lion and getting those extra three cabs, I noticed that one of the extra cabs is a Marshall Vintage 30 based cabinet, and it sounds really good. I think it sounds better than the three that I showed in my first Lion video. So, it can get a pretty great Marshall 412 sound out of just the Lion, but the flexibility that you get with the Ox Stomp, I absolutely think it is worth the price tag. Um, 400 isn't cheap, especially if you're already using a $400 Lion pedal. You're 800 in. You can get a tube amp for $800, but if you need a small pedal board, tiny portable rig that you're just gonna run into the house or run into an FRFR behind you, man, this is hard to beat. Unless you start going into the actual modeling world, which, you know, after comparing the Plexi and Marshall models in my Fractal FM3 and the Helix, uh, the Stomp HX, 
uh, the Lion Man, it just feels different. It feels different in a very good way. And um, you lose some of the flexibility that the modelers give you, obviously. But that's where the ox stomp comes in. It really lets you have all the extra EQing capabilities, the, the reverb, if you want it, the delay, if you want it. Um, so that's what I think is a very, a very efficient rock setup if you're wanting a small, compact, DI, high-gain rock sound. Um, I know the, the Lion mostly is billed as a kind of more of a classic type thing, but classic rock, but this is... That ain't classic rock. That's high-gain modern rock. If you want to do like Foo Fighters, Tool, Rage Against the Machine, Limp Bizkit, uh, Blink-182, trying to just rattle off a bunch of the crap that we play. I mean, Chili Peppers, you can play anything on this thing. And with a, any drive pedal in front of it, you are, man, you've got it all. So, um, I know this is not the cheapest setup in the world. And, oh, by the way, uh, the Spark is only there because I don't want to have to rely on the Ox Stomp app if I want to make an adjustment to the Solo Boost. Um, the first show, I had two identical presets set up in the Ox Stomp. One was a few decibels louder than the other one, and I would use the the preset toggle to toggle between preset A and B, or favorite A and B, to go from normal volume to slightly louder volume. And occasionally, if we're playing some places, I'll need to add a little bit or pull a little bit back in terms of how loud the, the solos are going to be. And I don't want to rely on a, if I'm perfectly honest, a kind of shady or iffy, shaky... Uh, Bluetooth connection. That's a very common complaint with the Ox Stomp. Um, the Spark is way easier to just twi twi turn, turn a little knob there, just a touch. Um, it's very sensitive. I wish the Spark were like a little bit more forgiving in terms of its how much you're increasing uh, when using it in a loop or in the line the way it's running now. Um, but for 60 bucks, that's a great solution. Anyways, back to the original uh, point I was going to make. I know this is not a cheap setup, and I think that's the elephant in the room that we need to keep in mind. Golden Boy, it's what, like a $300 pedal. Now, you can get a Maxon 808 or uh, literally any boost. I think that the Maxon 808, maybe the JHS Bonsai Double Barrel or the Sweet Tea, um, one of these... There's, you know, again, the full tone, full drive too, whatever. You've got all these double drive boosts. And I think the double drive boosts are really what give this thing a lot of flexibility. Um, but again, any drive pedal is going to do the trick. So you got a drive pedal. You've got the Lion, 400 bucks. You've got the Ox Stump, 400 bucks. If you want to run the Spark for the leads, that's another 60 bucks. If you want an EQ pedal in there to really fine tune and massage the sound and you don't want to have to do that in the Aux app and you find that the Lion is a little bit limiting in that regard, um, you know, that's another, what, 100 bucks or so if you're buying something off of Rebrip, like a used one. Um, so you're in this for a good thousand bucks or so and at that price point, you've got a lot of options. If you want to stay kind of in the analog realm, this is a, it's a great setup. But it can't be understated how much more power and flexibility you're going to get out of something like the Fractal FM3. I love mine. How much more power and flexibility and options you're going to get, routing options you're going to get with a Helix. Or... Um, even the Stomp HX, you're going to get a lot more sonic options. And uh, again, with those, you can add these pedals in with that too. But you're still talking, you know, once you cross over that $1,000 threshold, you've got a lot of options. And now with all these little lunchbox heads that have built-in IR loaders, um, MIDI selection, um, there's a lot of stiff competition and there's a lot of options and I think that's great for us. But 
if you're wanting a great analog plexi high gain rock sound or classic rock sound um, with the flexibility of the aux, the aux stomp being able to be used with other things you don't just have to use it with the line if you just buy this you can swap in one of those modelers and have a much better cabinet simulation I think that running the FM3 into the aux stomp sounds way better than any IR that comes with the uh, with the fractal it sounds better than the dynamic IR um, it sounds better than any just regular IR that I have and I've got you know some uh, ML Sound Labs and Own Hammer IRs that are really great sounding but there's something that the aux stomp does to the sound that is way better and I don't think that should be overlooked again and if you have a regular guitar amp and uh, a load box send it to the aux stomp the aux stomp alone is a huge piece of this that I think is the real kind of the showcase piece of this setup mainly because of how many options and the sound it unlocks with the Lion but also with so many other products. If you get one of those little lunchbox amps that has just a regular line out where you don't have to run a cabinet to it, run it into the aux stomp and you're going to get all that extra flexibility and better sound and room reverb, the, uh, the room sound, you got the reverb, you've got the delay um, there's a lot to be said, and I think for the money, the Ox Stomp is a great piece of gear. The Lion, $400 for a pretty good sounding Marshall pedal. If that's what you're after, I think that it's the best out there. But for the person who's wanting the Lion, but wanting more than what the Lion can offer in terms of the sounds and the flexibility, the Ox Stomp is a perfect companion. So, I know this got a little bit long-winded, but I feel like after having used it live in a you know a real band, real-world setting, used it a ton here at home, I've passed the honeymoon phase, and I'm kind of really getting down to what I like and what I don't like. And after using the aux stomp with all the other stuff in my room, uh, I, I think that the aux stomp is the most impressive piece out of all this. The Lion, it can't be understated how good it is, but for what all else I can use the aux stomp for, that's the piece that's probably not leaving my pedal board anytime soon. So, I think that there has, there's there's a lot of work that, that Universal Audio need to do with the, with the aux stomp interface, the Bluetooth connection problems, and specifically with the Lion, I want them to add the ability to toggle between two presets. I don't like the live and preset toggle. And I specifically say that because at one of our shows, a cable got pulled across my pedal board and the knobs got twisted when it was in the live mode setting. And after I had to quickly switch over to another, to my preset and kind of pull the gain back a little bit because in the live setting, I had it set to more of a clean sound. Um, but if I had the ability to just have it toggle between two presets that I've saved, then that would have completely eliminated that problem. I could have just double tapped the uh, the preset button and been right back to where I was before the cable messed up the, the knobs. So, Universal Audio, please take notes. I know I've said it on the forum, but I'm just saying it again in case uh, there's any of you guys watching this video. It would be greatly appreciated to have that feature. Um, that's all I got. And... Um, I know for, for what this video is showing, I know I talked a whole lot and I know a lot of people on YouTube, they don't want to hear talking, but if you're spending 800 plus dollars on this stuff, I feel like I need to talk about my experiences with it, what I like, what I don't like, because a lot of the YouTube reviews of this stuff, they don't mention this stuff because I think a lot of the guys, they might not use it the way that I use it and really start to see the shortcomings, but also they might not see the positives that I see in it. So I like to give a full perspective. Anyways, that's enough talking. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Um, I don't ask it a whole lot, but if you do like it, give me a subscribe. Uh, I'm trying to reach out to some more manufacturers to get some equipment, um, but I need subscribers for that. So any sub subscription ads you guys can do for me, that would help a lot. So anyways, thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys later. Bye.